The Department of Defense-sponsored Warrior Games features liberal comedian Jon Stewart awarding a member of Ukraine's neo-Nazi Azov Battalion at Disney World. The Grey Zone reports that multiple Ukrainian Nazis were invited to the happiest place on Earth by the Pentagon. But don't worry, his black his Nazi, sorry, black sun tattoo was covered up when he received the award. According to Wikipedia, the black sun symbol is widely used by neo-fascists, neo-Nazis, the far right, and white nationalists. How interesting. I thought it was, uh, was wasn't it as disinformation to say that we were funding uh, Nazi fighters in the Ukraine, but uh, not only are they uh, using, uh, being protected by weapons and things we've made available for Ukraine, we're actually just giving them medals now, invitations to Disney World. Yeah, That's look, nice. I don't think, you know, it's not necessarily John Stewart's fault. To, you know, he didn't. I'm sure he didn't request. <laughs> Can you please send one of the Nazis over to receive this award? <laughs> one Nazi, but, please. I mean, the fact that they keep like yeah. th this. This is the conversation that keeps happening. Folks say, sure, there's neo Nazis among the ranks of Ukrainian soldiers, but we also have fringe elements in our own military, and bringing them up and, and emphasizing their existence is simply a way to deflect from a war effort. It's a moral war, and we should be involved in that regardless. I obviously don't agree in the unlimited uh, spending on a war that has very little to do with uh, the interests of the American people. However, I, I can take that argument on its face. The problem is if you keep having moments where accidental Nazis keep showing up, it undermines the argument that they are so limited and so fringe in number. I would not expect to take a random member of the American military, you know, strip them down and see a white supremacist tattoo. No. It will you're, happen. Because you're not Tally 11. <laughs> <laughs> So Look, I'm, I'm referencing that uh, that time that fact checker um, claimed that in a photo a of a of a mil I think it was a, oh, police, was it I think a? It was a military okay. officer might have been a police officer claimed they had a, a, a the Nazi center, yeah. iron cross but and it, was it was just not, like a Christian just symbol a or something yeah yeah look and certainly it happens and there are a lot of symbols that I personally find distasteful but that aren't you know a one for one to white supremacy you know uh, Confederate flags and the like I'm not wild about it mm -hmm. I would swipe left but it's a thing that people. You don't, you don't uh, put uh, must-have Punisher uh, logos <laughs> on their phones right. in your dating uh, app. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I do not. Yeah. But like at a certain point, it, and, it, and there's also, I think, a legitimate case that there is it is a problem within our own military that there are like fringe elements. I think that that's the the the, the analogy there almost undermines your point about. The, our own issues with our own extremism in our country. It doesn't make it better that it's happening elsewhere. But at a certain point, it becomes super negligent. If you're covering up a tattoo, that means that somebody was aware of the tattoo and still chose to go ahead with this if it's being reported accurately. It underscores the point that in every conflict, there are always good and bad people on both sides. Yeah. It is always murkier than the, we want it to be this, you know, this World War II-esque, moral contrast between the forces of good and an army of evil. And that's how we want to view every conflict. And apart from World War II, you can't ever really put that that easy framing on things. We you know, in our in our in our adventures in the Middle East, we have had to work with groups who are engaged in violence and terrorism and have and have uh, harmed women's rights and other people's rights. And we've done that because we think, well, they're pr preferable to these other guys or they're more sympathetic right. to the U.S. And that's what we're doing here yeah. because that's always what we're doing. But we can't and, – and, and we can determine, we can say, look, we think this is in our best national security interests, so we have to do this. I would argue that this is not necessarily in our best right. national security interests, but that's not even what they're saying. They're saying, right, this is a moral conflict between good and evil, and the, and the Ukrainian cause is good. And, and look, the cause itself – is correct. They yes. got invaded, you got and they shouldn't be invaded. And you shouldn't be invaded. But look, I actually I disagree a little bit. I do think that there are. It is possible in many cases outside of just World War II to say that there are moral stakes that, arguably, ethically, America is called to defend. My issue with Ukraine is that that is never the metric by which we get involved, generally right. speaking. And when I asked people to help me understand at the beginning of this conflict, I was as I was trying to understand it what justifies our intervention here and not an X, Y, or Z instance where there, I would argue, is an enormous um, moral call to act and intervene on the behalf of unambiguously vulnerable people across the world. 
no one could explain why, because the issue was not the moral issue. It's not like the, the Pentagon does a ranking of, of traumatized people on the planet mm -hmm. Earth and says, let's start at the top, right. or let's see where the, what's, what's the biggest bang for our buck. You know, How many lives can this dollar of American money save? No, that's not how they're going about this at all. So I really balk at the idea of there being this um, moral call to justice when you have moments like this that obviously undermine the case. Mm. Well, speaking of morality, across the pond, Europeans are grappling with soaring energy prices. But Germany's federal minister for foreign affairs has said their support for Ukraine will remain unwavering and voters be damned. Watch. But if I give the promise to people in Ukraine, we stand with you as long as you need us, then I want to deliver, no matter what my German voters think, but I want to deliver to the people of Ukraine. And this is why, for me, it's important to be always very frank and clear. And this means every measure I'm taking, I have to be clear that this holds on as long as Ukraine needs me. We are facing now a winter time where we will be challenged as democratic politicians. People will go on the street and say, we cannot pay our energy prices. And I will say, yes, I know, so we help you with social measures. But I don't want to say, okay, then we stop the sanctions against uh, Russia. We will stand with Ukraine, and this means the sanction will stay also in wintertime, even if it gets really tough for po politicians. The sanctions haven't even worked. That's a different issue. Yeah, also, no matter what my German voters think is quite an interesting admission. It, right, it's one, uh, it's one maybe our own American elected <laughs> officials could actually concede that the voters are not necessarily so down with this. Um, I mean, it's tacit, right? I mean, it, look, it, it is not the case that every time there's a majority of people who want something is necessarily great or moral right. or a good idea. Right. Although that's on foreign policy, if elected officials hewed closer to what the majority of Americans want on foreign policy, more than any other issue, I, probably in my view, you would have an improvement in policy. I mean, I think so too, because who does war benefit? Who's profiting right, right now off of th these excursions? And always the people have turned against, uh, in, in the US, at least in my lifetime, at least since 9-11, the people have turned against Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, everything else before the elected officials, yeah. far before yes. the generals and the military, et cetera. Yes, the media was mad about the withdrawal from Afghanistan. The Biden's polls went up. Yeah. People were happy about it. It happens over and over again. So I don't know. It, it is it is frustrating that we only have the tacit admission of that here, but the explicit admission of it there. And when you look at who's profiting from this, when you look at the fact that you have a revolving door of Raytheon employees who are staffing the Defense Department, when you see the level of investment that these companies, I'm sorry, the, the theme of the day, for me at least, has kind of been lobbying powers hurting America. It was a theme of my radar. Today, yeah. and it, it keeps coming up yeah. in all of these segments. You can't look at Lloyd Austin. You can't look at the you know, Secretary of Defense coming straight from these companies. You can't look at uh, you know, Biden taking time out of his schedule to go down to the plant and what was it, Louisiana, and talking about how this was a good thing for America. You can't look at who exactly profits off of, off of sending these rocket launchers and things to Ukraine and not understand that this is just another uh, you know, prong of the military industrial complex and a profit scheme for people who are absolutely not us and are not the people who are fighting and dying in this war. Katie Halper likes to say this a lot. The war in Ukraine will end through diplomacy one way or another, sooner rather than later. And people are making the argument that by escalating and, and sending weapons and showing force from Ukraine, it forces uh, Russia to the bargaining table. But with recent reporting that we covered here on the show this right. week, um, that we talked to Aaron Mate about uh, how, you know, in what was it, April, very, very early in the conflict, uh, or right before a, the conflict, they had a model rather, for a deal. They had a model, had a model, for, model a deal for a deal that the West undermined, yeah. right? They, they, you know, so the idea that we would stop if Russia went ahead and stopped, I'm sorry, it just isn't, isn't borne out by reality and the facts and the history and the reporting on the table. And so people have to really start asking what's motivating this conflict and making demands of their politicians to do different. Now it's gonna be hard because the politicians are sitting here saying to your face, I'm not going to respond to democratic demands. I don't think in the case of, uh, of what guides our foreign policy and military ventures, I'm not, I'm not saying that it is not due to defense contracting and that sort of, level. I absolutely think that has an effect. I think it is partly, and in my view, probably more so ideological. Uh, the, the state 
the deep state, the the military advisors are so ideologically uh, ideologically committed to a hawkish, you know, forced democracy on people. Well, yes, of. but that's part of it. It's also part of this uh, economic superstructure. But it's not just Glo Raytheon's globalism li lining their pockets. No, no, no it's not something. just it's because they believe they can do this. That the, the American military might can inst can install. Democracy, well, and they must, and they can't admit that they're wrong and, because and it undermines the entire decades and decades of this thinking. Which right, has and, never and they must to, I'm sorry, prop up our economic system that so many places around the world have tried to shirk because the way of the way that neoliberal policies hurt poor and working people. Part of the mm. bedrock of the conflict in Ukraine was that it was being torn between a kind of a Russian economic relief package and a Western economic IMF course of action that would force it into neoliberalism that would force wages down and hurt a lot of the people that are living in the country. And it was it's a it's a it's a Faustian bargain. Many people in the country were actually opting to move in a line with a Russian version and that's when we had the what gets, coup. What gets smeared as neoliberal? Well, this is probably a, a longer decision that's for a, a different time, but uh, <laughs> by liberal we mean like market forces the yes, north I'm european sorry. countries seem to if have really happy neoliberal economies that are very successful well, if, and if, very If we believe in real democracy and self-determination, then when Venezuela, if it wants to be socialist, if Cuba wants to be socialist, if the USSR wants to do their thing, then we wouldn't have wars of aggression and sanction regimes that keep the people in those countries from having the, the kind of societies well, we should, that they we want to structure. That, but, uh, they, the their socialism fight, wouldn't be magically successful if we were nice Well, how will we ever know if we don't try to undermine it at every turn? I think we you know, well, we, they, There has never been a level of confidence that that will be the case that prevented the United States from going and intervening. The fact of the US U.S.'s intervening intervention shows you how insecure they are about whether or not people would choose outside of being at the tip well, we of the gun, be, capitalism. Sure. We don't need to be insecure about it, but <laughs> All right. we know. Whether it's the police state here at home that it's increasingly militarized. We can let everyone who wants to go to North Korea and be immediately imprisoned uh, as a assumed spy it's, if they want to. All right. So at the at the tip of the gun, Americans enforce capitalism here at home. No. no we we talked about to. the Breonna Taylor raid. We talked about how they're forcing imminent domain slash. Breonna Taylor. What does that have to do with See, Brianna, is, every, Brianna Taylor is neoliberalism. This is the this is the Robbie, just, everything is neoliberalism. We just had a segment about how the there is a gentr gentrification regime where they were trying to do a high uh, right. de a development project. So they were harassing residents in the area to try to clear it out for for development. I mean. All of these things are connected, and what the left tries to do is make the case for why we have to have international solidarity and why we have to be very skeptical of these kind of hyper militaristic arms. For me, the government violating people's private property rights is choices. not neoliberalism. Neoliberalism is the government leaving people alone. All right, we'll have to keep debating that one, but we will have more rising for you for sure after this.